Why do the Jimmy Choo's, Gucci's, Leather World and Prada's of this world command billions of dollars in revenue while the numerous leather producers on the African continent merely struggle to survive? The answer lies in the value chain concept. On this episode, the Talk TV crew seeks to explore the concept of value chain as we engage with former presidential advisor on economic matters and professor of economics, Professor Kasi. Professor Garbo, welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, uh, we're looking at the concept of value chain and we want to look at it in relation to contemporary business practice. Specifically, we want to examine it from the perspective of how entrepreneurs can help their business to gain competitive advantage. So please take us through the concept of value chain. Um, thank you very much. Uh, this is a concept that was started quite some time ago in the 80s by Porter. Uh, it's a concept that is anchored on uh, the process management style of series of activities that are value adding that you ensure that your products or your company goes through from the beginning production uh, uh, stage of a, of a product through the process, through consumers, through distribution and everything. It's a series of value adding activities that a business owner has to go through to ensure that uh, it's able to satisfy the consumers and it's able to sustain itself and it's able to ensure growth and development for that business. So it's deliberate attempt to choose activities that are value adding throughout the life of a product from, from even the conceptualization of the product through the development of the product, through the processing of the product and how many things you can process with that resource and eventually through the outputs that come out of that process and of course the outcomes which is how consumers benefit at the end of using your product. So there are a series of things you have to do to ensure that you add value at every stage of the life of a product. Businesses can use this to compete because customers are looking for people, uh, businesses that can give them products that will uh, maximize their benefit. And if you believe in the value chain concept, you are worrying about how consumers, not just buying your product, but how would they feel at the end of using your product? Are they satisfied? You are not only interested in the output in terms of the products you make, but you are interested in the outcome, yes. how they benefit from using your product. Or even if they don't benefit, how, what do you do to correct it? And if they benefit, what can you do to ensure that the benefit is maximized? All of these things deal with the issue of value chain. And I hope as we begin to talk more, I'll be able to elaborate on each of these stages. I believe so. Uh, now, uh, to many viewers out there, uh, all of this is theoretical. Yes. So we're going to have to break it down, okay. as it were. Now, first of all, uh, the impression I go away with, with the brief explanation of that concept that you gave us, is of an entrepreneur to think cerebral, intellectual, uh, to have intellectual input into the venture that he has chosen. Now, um, the problem that some people may have with that is that the culture in our environment is when you want to do a business, just set up an office or a shop and roll. Are you saying that that's the gap that's missing? That's why Africa has not come up to the level that other continents have achieved in economic uh, and investments. Actually, there are two ways or several ways of going into business and doing business. Okay. Generally, people say, oh, I'm going into business to make profit, mm -hmm. to make money. But when you are working with the value chain concept, what you think about is beyond making money. You want to affect lives. You want to add value to lives. Of course, eventually you will make money, but you will make beyond money. Because you are going to have a business that is so well run and it can be replicated and it becomes bigger than what you started with. What we have around here mostly is people say, oh, I'm going into this business. Why are you going into it? Oh, I want to make profit. I want to make money. I want to be wealthy and things like that. Those things are okay. But your, your, your vision can be bigger than that. To say, look here, I want to feel a, a need. There's a need I've identified. And I want to fill that gap. I want to add value to lives. And in doing it, I'm going to work with others. I'm going to work with resources 
both physical resources, human resources, and so on. And if I'm working with the value chain concept, I'm very careful in selecting the resources I work with because I'm not just interested in making profit, but I want to make profit in such a way that consumers are not harmed in any way, to ensure that my workers are not harmed in any way, to ensure that I actually add value to the Nigerian state so that others can learn how to do it the way I'm doing it. So what I'm trying to say is that you can do a business and just make profit. And when people consume your product, they don't remember you. They just say, did you enjoy that? It's okay. But you can actually consume a product and you say, goodness gracious, who made this product? Did they know that they just made it just for me? And it's not just for you. It's just that the way the producer or the owner of the business has conceptualized the business is in such a way that when every consumer consumes his or his product, they feel that it was tailor made for them. Because attention has been given to production, to processing, to delivery, to marketing, to everything about the life of that product. You will make profit, but you make beyond profit. Mm. And it's, it's quite interesting and because uh, we don't tend to think of business in our climb here as a chain of activities that are interrelated, interdependent. We don't tend to think of business activities in terms of a relay race where you hand over the button to the next stage. And uh, can you please extrapolate and give us more insight into how it works in contemporary business situations uh, from concept to um, design, production, sales, marketing, distribution, and so on. Uh, I'd like you to just uh, give us, uh, 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 take us through the journey. If you, want, if you start a business and you decide that, look, I'm going to rely on this value chain concept, what it does for you is that even before you start making the product, you think, what are the needs of the people? Hmm. You are not going to decide the what their needs are. Yes, what are their needs? How far has businesses that exist met that, those needs? How have they met the needs? What are the gaps in place? How do we fill those gaps? And then you spend time to say, what are the kinds of resources I will require to meet those needs that have been identified? One of the resources you require are raw materials. Yeah. When you are choosing your raw materials, assuming that they've been consuming this product for a while, but they are not just happy, but they are, they are using it because they don't, they don't have an option. Hmm. But here you come with this value chain concept. And you said, at the beginning, I'm going to select my raw materials that will have so much impact that they won't even remember using any other brand before. They will only remember mine. That means that your selection of raw materials is going to meet or be of a certain standard. A standard that you have set from the beginning. Knowing that that first stage of selection of raw materials is going to impact on the process, which is the intermediary stage. Whatever you feed into the process is what will come out as an output at the end. Mm. So if you select the raw materials in terms of uh, maybe cassava, you select the good ones or yams or rice. When you process it, the end product will be good. But if you select the rotting ones thinking that, oh, when I process, nobody will know. Then when you finish it, people will tell you that we tasted it, something didn't quite, it didn't, it didn't uh. taste right. So in the chain, your raw material selection is important. Your staff is important. Those you work with is important. Because it must be people that share this value with you mm -hmm. of the chain of the chain concept mm -hmm. of the need to deliver to consumers what will benefit them and maximize their, their, their utility. So you have to select people not based on is my brother, he needs a job. Mm. You must select competent people, professional people like yourself. Unless of course you yourself, you are not so serious. But if you are serious about it, you select the right materials in terms of things, human materials and any other inputs you need to put in. And then when you move these materials to the process stage, Process is when you actually go into production and you are using some technology. Mm -hmm. You will use the kind of technology that will lead to an output that you desire. Yeah. There are different kinds of technologies. That's why in contemporary world, sometimes we Africans, we Nigerians, we process things using the traditional way of doing it. And we get an output that the world may not accept. And we expect the output that will compete with, with the other people exactly, from other parts of the world. Exactly. But using the value chain means that at every stage of the chain, you must prevent the weak link from drawing you down. 
If technology is your weak link, you are in trouble. Because if, for example, you are into textile, and you go to Lagos State, you are in textile, like Kaduna State, they, are into te they want to make textiles and so on. They don't create cotton, they don't make cotton, they don't produce cotton. But Gombe produces cotton. Kaduna can go to Gombe and say, look here, we hear that you produce high quality cotton. Can, we, can you work with us? Or give them a specification. Yes, yeah, specification. And then we guarantee that you will have demand for, for your products because we will collect that product as intermediate products that we use to make fabrics. So you can actually now go to the end users. Lagos is one of your end users. What kind of fabrics do you need? They give you specification. Or, so you, that, talk, or you talk to some traders. You talk to some traders, exactly. What's the consumer uh, behavior yes. like? Yes. What, what are do they the want? What are their expectations? What kind of quality do you want? You make a choice. And based on what they tell you, you go back to Gombe and say, please, I want this grade of cotton. Mm. Because the final producers want this caliber, uh, type of fabrics. And Gombe will work with you. You work together. Then you will now process that into the kind of fabrics that your end users want. But if you say, well, Gombe makes cotton, I can also make cotton, I'll grow my own cotton. Forgetting that Gombe is, has an advantage in making cotton because they, they are in the drier part of the north. If you grow cotton in, in Kaduna, it will not be like the one that comes from Gombe. So because, even, because the process has been tinkered with. Exactly. Due to the soil formation. Exactly. So in terms of value chain, it's a stakeholder kind of concept whereby you are not doing everything by yourself but you have a vision you have a plan you select people you work with mm -hmm. you select inputs you work with so that you can arrive at the kind of products that consumers have asked for and when you have satisfied your consumer you go back to the consumer have we done what you expected mm. and they said yes but in this area there was a problem you quickly come back and correct it so the beauty of value chain is that it allows you to uh, recognize the importance of every stage of the life of the product. Every stage. Yeah, every stage. From conceptualization to production to processing to marketing, mm. post sales, behavior of consumers, and so on. Even the store behavior. Exactly. When, when customers come into yes, the store. Yes, the behavior of the salespersons and so on. All of these are part of the chain. More scale and entrepreneurs, for example, or small one scale businesses, business. one man business. They don't need to do very big research. Okay. When you sit in front of your shop and you are starting a business and you ask people that pass by that, what kind of thing do you want? This pure water they are making, they used to put it in such a, they tie it. Mm -hmm. But it was from talking to people that they got the idea of sealing it. The, 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 yes, True. yes the, the improvements they have made comes from people and that is research. It may not have cost a lot of money. Because the average person it's thinks in terms of research, in terms of <laughs> some scholar. No. With volumes and reams no. of papers. No, no, and, no. And uh, no. charging exorbitant amounts to no, go no, to the field no. and gather. So research could be as simple as observation. Observation. You could observe. What is it? When they are, for example, when I, I used to work in a bank before I went to the university. And as a banker, because I trained a bit uh, in the financial sector. sector. I know that the issue of cashier, those in the banks, mm -hmm. attending to customers, your attitude is so important to customers. It is. And I the way you conduct it. yourself is so important. So when I was there, I was a youth copper. I was put there as a, you know, in front of the desk, mm -hmm. sometimes as a receptionist, as a cashier. I never ate food because I know in my training that customers may smile when you are eating. They hate it. They don't like it when you eat akara or you are eating granite and things like that that are very offensive. So there are things that you have to observe. If you observe your customer in front of you, always closing his nose or doing something, you ask yourself, what are, ah, I'm eating. You quickly drop it. So there are some things you do, research you carry out from observation. Some you do by talking to people informally. Hmm. Just informally. talk informally, yes. You want to deal with the, uh, the bank, or, uh, the bank uh, customers, you stay in front of the door and ask them questions. Or you, are, you want to start a restaurant, you ask them, the, what kind of food do you like? How do you want it packaged? And things like that. Or you even, this seek, is out, or you even seek out maybe sales attendants yes. or persons who are functioning as sales yes, attendants and, and ask, ask them, them questions. Yes, what do customers want? What do they complain about? What's their buying behavior? Exactly, what's their buying behavior? What do they come back to report to you after they've consumed the food? And these are researches. There is room for big research, mm -hmm. but there is room for intermediate research, 
and small research, but they are all relevant. Coming up. When we see young people who have the desire to excel and are identifying areas of gaps, we should encourage them. Because that's where that's what countries that have made it have made of. I'm so glad that you clarified this for us. And as you are speaking now, something dawned on me. I've read autobiographies of very successful entrepreneurs, um, Africans and uh, from other continents. And one thread that I see, especially those across the Atlantic, one thread I see about their success is they start by looking at gaps in the market. Yes. Who are the underserved segments yes. of the market? Yes. What is it that they need that the present Goliaths are not able to satisfy, not able to satisfy them? And then they go into that niche area. Yes. And it's from there that they come around to challenge the big boss. Yes. And more often than not, they push the big boss out of uh, reckoning or even buy them or acquire them at some point. So as you're speaking now, it just clicked in my head. Perhaps that's the secret of the success of many conglomerates and the LGs of this world, the Dewus of this world. Yes. So, so it, 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 in a sense, it's a, it's a very good thing that we're discussing this today and I hope that our viewers out there yes, are I, taking I notes hope so. I hope so. and also listening and finding out how they can penetrate, you know, how they can penetrate and gain market expansion. And interestingly though, there are many, uh, there are some gaps that are still in Nigeria that businesses don't think about. Okay. Somehow, I don't know how we go to the culture of Oh, this person is doing well. I have to go to what he's doing. Everybody, if if you are selling anything around UI today, just give it, and you are doing well, just give it two months. Everybody is into it. They don't think now that this person is into this. What are the gaps? Are there some this very product? Are there consumers who are not able to afford it because this man is making it too big, too elaborate that they can't afford it? Shouldn't I focus on that segment? What can I do? What can I do even with value chain concept to meet the needs of those ones? The funniest thing is that if you do that and you now reach the unreached market and you begin to serve them, believe me, in some cases, the customers of the big person in the, in the industry will begin to recognize you and say, ah, this thing is not as expensive as the other one. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It is clean. Why don't I try it? And he, like you said earlier, may begin to take over the customers of the other. So Nigerians need to break out of this box of, oh, I must go into where somebody else is succeeding. Instead of finding out what are the gaps, and there are many, many gaps. The person that started um, this mobile toilet. Yes. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. You know? He went to parties. Yes, and, and there was nowhere to use the toilet. And he thought about it, wouldn't it be interesting? In fact, when I first heard about it, I said, wow. How can that be until I saw it? Yes. Very clean. Very clean. Very distance. clean. Yes. And somebody thought about that. An entrepreneur mm -hmm. thought about that. And I believe that if Nigerians think that way, because we have a lot of talented people, yes. but it's just that we need to remove ourselves from this mentality of I must go to where others are. Find out where the gaps are. Try to fill the gaps. And, and also, I'm learning something from you now. Even if you have to do what other people are doing, yes. you do it. go and think critically about how you can do it in a different in way. In a different way. Always appear Add fresh. value. Add value. Add value. Many of my students are doing that and I I just smile with pride when I see them. 100 level, 200 level students and they are coming because we have taught one course in entrepreneurship. Mm. They come and say, I know how to braid hair. I know how to bake my, what do I do? Actually, a student, let me quickly say, a student please, of mine, please. when we taught entrepreneurship for just a few hours, she came to me and said, I'm sorry, I couldn't ask questions in the hall, but I've been, I like to cook a lot. Mm -hmm. And a few of my friends have asked me to help them cook. I said, did you charge them for it? He said, no. I said, have you thought about doing something? Or do you go out on Saturday? She said, no, I don't go anywhere. Why don't you start something in the hall? She was in India Hall in UI. She started cooking soup, a goosey soup, a bono soup, stew in little bowls. Oh, yeah, right. Believe me, it didn't last an hour before everybody, people bought them. Today, she graduated about three, four years ago. Today, she's a big, big, big caterer. Mm. You know? Just I mean, because she did it yeah, a she, 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 she saw a need and a gap. There were cafeterias on campus, mm -hmm. but students didn't find it convenient to trek far. 
and they didn't find the kind of food they wanted mm -hmm. and this girl saw that need and she fe she, she met the need you know and she filled that gap and there are so many needs there are many students who are babas yeah you know and they do well and bankers come to ui to barbie hey. so what i'm trying to say is that when we see young people who have the desire to excel and are identifying areas of gaps, we should encourage them because that's where that's what countries that have made it are made of that's how they, yeah. or small small businesses like that so government should encourage it create the right environment for these kinds of people to come up and those who are already doing it and are, are bemoaning their inability to succeed and grow perhaps it's because you're not looking at value chain concepts perhaps and uh, i think starting from today you need to begin to look for role models look for consultants or find someone whom you can talk to who will educate you about how the value chain concept works and you will turn the scale i mean i've seen it happen over and over with several billionaires across the world now how can i add value to an area and the chain of the production process of the distribution sales and marketing process and what have you. And it's a good thing that it can be replicated across uh, different business models, whether B2B, whether manufacturing, even when you are selling a place or a venue, event center. Yes. Because all over the place now, you see people building event centers and all of them are doing it the same way. They put up a rostrum somewhere and then they, they put chairs across the hall. And I keep wondering, when I walk into a business establishment, the first question I ask myself is, what's the emotional value in this business? And I can't see because you find the same thing everywhere. Perhaps if you're a car dealer, instead of arranging your car in the way, in the, others, in the way do others do it, perhaps if you arrange it like this logo of fan milk. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. Maybe you, you, you just arrange the cars like that. If I drive past and I see... I'll say, oh, that's new. What's, what's that? going on there? But what you see now is, it's a vertical straight line, yes. three cars in rows, and that's what everybody does. Actually, let me, let me just add to what you just said. You know, and in, in talking about value chains, there's something that can destroy a weak link that people don't know. Mm -hmm. If you are operating this concept, if you are using this concept to do your business, one of the mistakes you can make is to have a passion for some aspect of the chain and not so much passion for some. So you don't pay attention to them. Now, if you are, in, somebody said I'm making textile. Textile is in the apparel business. Yes. The industry mm -hmm. is apparel. It's not textile. It's apparel. It's a textile industry. Yes. But you think of it as apparel. If you think of apparel, like you know, you were talking about event center mm -hmm. and that people are doing it the same way. On Sunday, I went to a place and I saw something I never saw before. Because these young people, very young ladies. They were thinking entrepreneurially and using the value chain. They asked themselves, event center, what are things that are not being given now that we can add to ensure that people who use our services, we maximize the benefit that comes to them. For the first time, I saw, rather than just the DJ, uh, the MC and all of that being conducted by that company, mm -hmm. they have about six girls who are ushers, professional ushers. Mm. I've never seen it. And they were all dressed the same with this wonderful smile to welcome you. And I told my husband, who are these? Then we saw their card. They just, we sat and they just dropped their card. And, and I, I, and I, I bet said, you took the card I home. said, these are ushers. So my husband said, wow. And I, I bet, I'm, I'm sure you took the card home. And I was looking at these ladies. And they have so guys. groomed themselves. That the first thing that occurs to me that is when next time I'm doing an event and I need something, I need event manager, I will take these people because they are adding something new exactly we have to encourage that because there are so many things that comes with event centers that they don't think about they just do it the same way but i'm glad that young people are beginning to think outside the box and i, I also get, yes. got something from our conversation now about what you just said in relation to value chain um the end product that you see yes has passed through a chain of process yes as an entrepreneur, you may not have the capacity or the capital to produce that product. Yes. Perhaps there's a sense in which you could say, okay, this camera that we use to record, yes. I will just produce just a plastic yes. that, that uh, is used for the shutter. Yes. And if you stay in that and you do it well, well, then all camera makers will come to you exactly. for the shutter alone. Yes, yes. And if you're interested in music, 
Maybe your own will be to produce a software that will help the DJs to work better. Exactly. You may not know how to sing and you may not need to know how to sing. Yes, yes. But all you need is just research into the chain of how this end product yes. came about and find out which part of the chain you can fit into. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Mama? Exactly. You have already said it. But I'm glad you mentioned the, the entertainment industry. Yes. You know, Value Chain works in that industry yes, too. I, like this Nollywood thing they are mm -hmm. doing. It's such a success story for Nigeria, Nigeria and for Africa. But there are some things that are missing because the mm. Value Chain concept mm. is not being used by the government to promote this industry. Many of the things they buy, they go to South Africa. They want to shoot some things, they go to South Africa. They want to buy, uh, um, they buy some materials they use. They are going to South Africa. Yes. We have to stop that. Because we are actually importing jobs, uh, exporting so, jobs exporting to South jobs. Africa. So we can actually, and there is a lot of piracy, piracy in that industry. So there is something that can be done to make the value chain in the service industry, especially the entertainment industry, fuller than it is now. Mm. And then we recognize those, you were mentioning somebody that makes the cap that covers the camera. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And when you talk to some of these filmmakers, they say we are going to South Africa because the quality is so high. Who said Nigeria cannot do that? The reason most times we can't do that is that we spread ourselves too thin. Mm. We want to be the one to make the plastic, we want to make the one to make the metal, we want to do everything. Rather than working together, it's a stakeholders kind of thing. Coming up. There are some people like the banks, they are relevant to a chain because they supply the finance. You know, if it's a, the Bank of Industries, for example, they are funding certain kind of projects and the, the products you are making fit into their line. All right, welcome back. Just before we went on break, our professor was telling us about the concept of the value chain and how it impacts on the bottom line, specifically how it helps your competitive advantage. I've learned today that value chain is not just limited to production and marketing, but also it affects HR. It also helps you to track where you've gone wrong in your process. But most importantly, it affects every area of your business. So the, the, the secret is for you to see your business as a chain of events. And then the value chain concept requires that you have a defining principle that will be visible in every aspect of that chain till it gets to the end user, the output, and what have you. Now, uh, I want to ask you, ma'am, um, you will agree with me that in our environment, we don't seem to be catching up with this concept. Huge as the benefit is, as you've been able to point out to us today, I doubt if there are MBA students out there who have even ever tried to Google to, to read about value chain, uh, because we tend to think it's a cultural orientation thing, that you hit the ground running and keep running, rather than hit the ground, think before you hit the ground, yeah. and then put structures in place and process in place that you cannot separate outcome from the process that produced that outcome. Why do you think Nigeria is not catching on, and Africa at large is not catching on like the rest of the world, with this concept that has been a key ingredient that has catalyzed business growth in other climes? Actually, you, you, <laughs> when, you have, when you are coming from a, a poor environment, and I'm not just talking about poverty in terms of money, poverty of the mind. mind. Poverty of the mind is the worst. It's worse than financial poverty. Okay. Where you think small. You think within the box. You don't want to break out. You talked about MBA students that they may not even use this. After their MBA degree, they may go out, start a business and not and even do it. do it the same this. way. Okay, but sometimes I must admit that sometimes when you look at the curriculum, it doesn't touch on value chain management, development and management. But it does touch on marketing and the buyer process, which is partly part of this, really. So I will say that one of the reasons is that we, we sometimes live in boxes. Oh dear. You know, we have a box for, I'm in the classroom. Then when we get out of the classroom, we are not able to continue with what we were there. You know, we go to something else. I've had to ask one of my students, when I was teaching one of the important management theory, and we're discussing about integrity. 
and the role of integrity in winning the confidence of customers, in winning the confidence of international traders that you sell your products to outside the country. Everybody was excited and there was this gentleman in particular who was very excited and I know where he sits in class. He participates quite well in class. And I just told them, you know, jokingly, I said, well, um, we, are, we are touching on this topic because it was a very practical class. So that when you go out there, some of you will be ministers, some of you will be commissioners, some of you will be governors, and maybe one of you will be president. And they laughed and said, oh, amen. And this guy was one of them. Within two years that they graduated, he was made commissioner of finance for a state. And I was excited thinking that what we have taught in class, he will put it into practice. But he did exactly the opposite. The opposite. So when I was talking earlier As it about was in the people living in day. boxes, they don't connect what they learn in the classroom with reality. That's why we must change our educational system to be more practical, not so theoretical. We, we need to also emphasize here that the stakeholder concept, yes, yes. you know, um, which is another thing that I observe is lacking here and which is another benefit of the value chain concept. Um, you want to do it all, but you can't do it all. You can't, you can't. And even if you do succeed in doing it all, you won't be succeed, successful in anything. So I think a cluster um, environment where you can do some cluster factory things like they have in other climes in China. A lot of people don't know that when you go to China, the end product you see is produced in shops that are just like what you have in Adama Shimba and Oshodi. Yes. You know, I, I'd like you to touch more on that, on the need for entrepreneurs to understand the stakeholder concept, um, the team, that you are strong as your team, even though you're a one-man business. You don't have to think finance, think accounting, think business, think about your resources and your raw materials. You don't want to grow your farm and also have your poultry and also have your store where you sell at Chicken Republic. But if you allow yourself to see the stakeholder concept, then you'll be able to identify the many sectors where you can partner, the concept of synergy. Yes. Actually, the, the beauty of stakeholders is that you bring people in that are relevant to the chain. Okay. There are some people like the banks, they are relevant to a chain because they supply the finance. You know, if it's the Bank of Industries, for example, they are funding certain kind of projects and the, the products you are making fit into their line, they become part of the stakeholders that will come in. Your state government is interested in what you are doing, they become part of the stakeholders. Then all people that are relevant to making one item of the total product or the other becomes part of the stakeholders. But the importance of you who started the chain is that you have set a standard and selection of these stakeholders is based on that standard. You will not reduce the standard or select anyone that will diminish the standard. That's the beauty of, and in fact, when, when stakeholders meet, like uh, some time ago, we met in my, at my NGO, we were discussing with stakeholders on this issue of value chain and how to help state governments in Nigeria to work together on economic cluster basis. You know, when we came together, there were some ideas we had, but there were many ideas we didn't have mm. until we had a stakeholders meeting. The synergy. Yes. And people began to say, oh, why don't we do it this way? Why don't we do it? And I said, wow, we didn't think about that. So when you work together as stakeholders, even though he's the one making the thread, he can tell you that my thread will not work without weak fabric that you have brought. You better strengthen the fabric. So you give ideas to one another. And so you can't products. know it all. Yeah, you can't know it all. Even what you know, you think you know. When you meet as stakeholders in a stakeholders forum, you find out that people have ideas higher than yours, especially young people. They have brand new ideas that you never thought about. So it's a good thing. And incidentally, you mentioned the issue of uh, clusters. When, you are, when we are dealing with stake, uh, value chains in terms of the country, rather than just entrepreneurs, that actually is important. Clusters, economic clusters. Like I mentioned at the beginning, God has been so wonderful. He has blessed this nation with resources in all the geopolitical zones. And that you can actually have economic clusters, like in the Southeast, they, make, they manufacture things a lot. In the North, some parts of them, they do agriculture a lot. There are things that different parts 
of the country have been blessed with and when you act as clusters what they produce in the east they are not going to consume everything there they have to take it to the north and the north has to bring agriculture to them mm -hmm. So when you think in terms of economic clusters, you are thinking of how can the government encourage those clusters by building infrastructures for those clusters and at the end building roads, building roads for them to connect with one another because it's a system. It's a system. Just like when you are thinking of an entrepreneur who is going to think of the workers, the distributors, the marketers coming together as a nation HR. also. Yes, for me HR. HR. Yes, as a nation you also have to think of this thing that is made in Maiduguri, how can I get it to Lagos? This thing that is made in Lagos, how can it go to Port Harcourt? What kind of infrastructure can government put in place? How can I ensure that Ogun State and Lagos State collaborate to ensure that they work together because they share their contiguous states? They, work, they, are, they, have, they share the same boundary. How can we make sure they work together? And in working together, how can we make sure that what they produce goes to other parts of the country? So the issue of value chain, it works at the national level as well as at the micro level, at the individual business level. And you also mentioned that at the personal level. At the <laughs> yes. I, I didn't forget that. Yes, at the personal Before level. Before the cameras also, rolled, you were yes. telling me that even yes. at the personal level, yes, at at the personal level to at manage your own life, exactly. value chain concept is oh, relevant. It's relevant. It helps to tie up the different aspects of yes. your being, of your existence. In fact, it shows that you are a serious person. Mm. When you put structures and processes in place that helps you move from morning till evening, there are some people who wake up <laughs> and they don't have any idea how the day is going to look. And you say, ah, and it's 10 o'clock already and so boy how now what are you going to say I, i'm not sure yet i won't reach this place he has no focus in fact everybody will nobody will probably say it to him in their mind they say ah this man has no future ambition like you know, NF, no future ambition nfa just, <laughs> you know? just drifting. <laughs> drifting and that's what they love they just do yes. and they bring that yes. uh, attitude yes, into to their be, business can you imagine such a person if you hire such a person at 10 o'clock he's yawning he's tired but there are people they have no jobs but they have ambition yes. when they wake up in the morning oh i'm going to go to this place today to look for a job i'm going to go to this library today to do this um, and they fit things together mm. and when there's anything that is creeping in that is not in line with their plan they quickly tune it off they have value chain they don't allow their lives. yes so you they carry when you hire such a person they carry he, he he carries that to the business you know when we before we started i was telling you about your cameraman the producer and all, all, all the people working mm -hmm. with you that i'm sure you took time to select them yes. because they must fit into that standard you have set the for your picture. program That's yes cool. and if you choose anyone who is weak all the good work you have done so it's important that in building value chain that your stakeholders that you bring in must be carefully selected to maximize your profit but more important to be efficient and to be effective mm. so that your end product when it gets to the consumers the outcome is positive mm. and then you can grow and like you you always mention you can replicate this exactly. you know you exactly. see Which i know that's the, a baby of yours you know? yes, yes replication yes replication <laughs> is and, really and the pragmatist in me just wants to curb your indulgence to also add to what you just said now to chip in that uh, I, I walked into a store uh, just a few days ago and gift store. I hand is like, I mean, it's not like exotic and expensive like Harrods, but it's like a mini Harrods. In Nigeria? Yes. In Ibadan? In Ibadan. Oh, wonderful. And I, I was thinking to myself, then I asked the owner, who do you hope to serve? I said, of course, the uh, mid level. But relatively high, but not like the bourgeois up there, but very high middle class people who have taste and who have panache and style and a, a strong sense of style. And then in my mind, I was thinking to myself, you put in very, very solid uh, deco. Yes. Very solid interior deco. I don't usually get impressed with stuff like that, but I was impressed with the space and everything. The products, the goods, very, very good. Variety, unique things, you know, interior materials and so on and so forth. And then I thought to myself, this is the weakest link, the attendant. They are? The attendant. Ooh. The, 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 the store ah. sales officers. 
And I told her, I said, I think, I think there's something that you're not looking at here. You've invested so much money to bring all this. Nobody will start and taste, will enter your store and not find things that he will take away. But buying is an emotional experience. Yes. You want to go for someone who will collect 10,000 or 6,000 a month. Because the kind of value that you have created, the kind of value that you want to attach to your service. Because it's not about selling goods alone, but how the customer wants to be served. These women, these ladies are not going to give it in a thousand years. Right. And she was bemoaning and lamenting that she's tired. Unless she's in the store, they don't sell, that they can't. I said, you know what? You are putting a maze on a concrete slab and you expect it to grow. It will not. These people, they are at best good to work in your house where you can put them to domestic use. Get top note. And I gave her an idea of the kind of person she should get and I told her they're going to collect good money. Exactly, exactly. But don't mind because your chain is not over until the people that will serve your customers. And so as we were talking now, it just came to my mind that a lot of outlets in Nigeria and some African countries that I've been to are like that. You get in there, the interior works is superb, the products are high-end, but they just go to the village and bring one... Somebody that they need to help get a job without just, linking it to the chain. To the chain. Yes. It's so important. Sinani, I want to mention this, that I, I hope many businesses in Nigeria will listen to what you just said because it's so important. Those who own restaurants, those who serve in restaurants, must be, I used to be a waiter wow. a long time ago in the US to wow. pay my fees, I had to be a waiter and so on. I was the best there was because the tips I got was more than what they came to eat because they couldn't believe somebody could love being a waiter so much that some people will eat for about $20 and when they are leaving, they give me the $50 tip. Just because of the attitude yes, you got yes, into the business. Yes, and that is so important. Any job I have ever done, cleaning the ground in the schools in the US, doing whatever guru job we were doing, yes. I did it with so much pride and I got paid. Not only in money kind, but in thank you. Thank you. Coming up. So you've talked about physical infrastructure. What about the legal infrastructure? Is there a role that lawmakers can play in this value chain concept thing? I mean, in terms of growing the culture of value chain in our society, in our media? So you must bring in people who share your vision. You can't have a good restaurant with good menu and so on, and the server is hungry, the server has not showered properly, you can see it. They don't smell well. All of these things are important. It's poorly dressed. Yes, it's they don't angry. use deodorant. Mm -hmm. it's, it, these things are very important. And I'm really, I'm glad you brought it up because it's one of those weak links mm. that can destroy a very good link, uh, chain. Mm. When you don't have the right support staff, people that are actually the faces that they see. One of the advantages that small businesses have over big businesses People don't want to hear this, but it's the truth. Some small businesses, they have some advantage over large businesses. I think so. Not in terms of money, but this personal touch. Personal touch. They are nimble. They yes. Can, when you get to the, to the place and the person says, oh, good morning. How are your children? These are, it creates customer delight. Mm. What you told that lady to do in the place where you saw good products. Yeah. Is to bring about customer delight. When people buy things, they go away not just with that product, but they remember hmm. the service they got. The feeling. The, the, the feeling. The, and they are content. And they say, I am going back to that store. Even if I don't have anything to buy, I'm going to go there hmm. and pretend as if I have something to buy. Just I'm going to, to go there and window shop. Yes. I've heard of people who go to shop right just to buy bread. Yes. And just, people who go to just to buy a can of uh, yes. Coke. They walk around and they like the air yeah. around them. Nigerians need to begin to think like that. Oh dear. <laughs> we need to think like that. So it's not enough for you to just set up a business. If, you, if, if your business is not working the way yes. you desire, yes. go back and establish where are the links. Yes. 
where is the system? Yes. And then where are the weak links yes. in your business? And yes. try to find something to do about that. Yes. I think um, before we let you go, I also want to uh, find out from you, the, the, the new administration in the country, what will you be advising the various styles of government? You were a one-time chief economic advisor to the president of Nigeria. Uh, what would you be advising the three styles of government in terms of this value chain principle? Why don't you just narrow ourselves to it? Because, I mean, it's so broad, yeah. uh, business and economy is broad, but this value chain, how can the government facilitate this idea um, in their own uh, way? The first tier, second tier, and the third tier, taking into cognizance also the role of the three arms of government. That's a tall one, man. But, uh, no, no, I think I'll simplify. I'll just answer an aspect of it. Okay. Uh, since your topic is actually not to do with the, the government per se. No. But with respect to, you know, regional regional cooperation, okay. regional um, development, ensuring that development takes place across Nigeria, mm. not in some parts. Because if you go to the Northeast, there's so much poverty, and because of that, there's instability. If you go to Niger Delta, because of poverty. So the instability and insecurity we have stems from poverty and a lot of things like unemployment and things like that. I dare say that value chain concept is one way you can correct the imbalance. Growth has to have a balance. Growth has to yes, have a balance. Yes, it has to have a balance. It must be across Nigeria. That is why God has not made a mistake endowing Nigeria across the geopolitical zones. So value chains must be built within each of the zones and government can enable that. I by encouraging, you know, by you know, earlier on I mentioned the issue of Kaduna and Gombe mm. working together, Lagos and Ogun working together, states working together, re realizing that they can't do everything. There are some things that I am blessed with in my state, in my geopolitical zone, that when we use the value chain to produce a lot, unless there's demand for it, we can't achieve anything. But the demand can be in another zone. Mm. That means that we must collaborate. So what the government can do is to enable the states to work together by building infrastructures that connect the states. By helping the states who are already building infrastructures like light rail and so on to complete it and ensuring that these people are brought together. Luckily for us, the central government and most of the states are APC. So they won't say now that, oh, I'm dealing with the, the other party. They can work together to ensure that, you know, what, in, what really excited me about the last few years is that I was studying, it wasn't APC then, it was AC, is it AC? What they, before they became APC, ACN. That many, if you go to Abel Kuta, come to Ibadan, you see some structures that are similar. They actually sat together and say, this party must do this. Mm. You governors, you must go and do that. That is beauty of working together and ensuring that everybody falls in line and work together. What I want to advise this government to do is there are things that the state governments can do better than the federal government. Mm. There are things that the local government can do better than the state government. Mm. But there is synergy. They must work together. And when we have the value chain concept, that means that each of these level of government mm -hmm. have a place to, they have a part to play mm. in ensuring, ensuring that the value chain works. Okay. And they must be ready to assist businesses within each geopolitical zone to build their value chain to manage their value chain with the support from government mm. with the support from the financial sector with the support for example please let me just end with this please. if for example we practice the issue of value chain in nigeria yes and we begin to produce things that we used to import if for example there's a man in the east who produces vehicles many people don't know him his name is innocent he produces vehicles. When I was in government briefly, I went to his factory and I couldn't believe that these vehicles were made in Nigeria. But he told me that he wanted to make tires, but he didn't have rubber. So he was trying to plant rubber plantation. And I said, why? Talk to him. He said, I've tried. They didn't listen to me. So I just picked up the phone and called the man in the rubber industry, the head of them. And he came, Yanusi. He came and talked to Innocent. And he said, okay, I'll make you good tires. They began to work together. Mm -hmm. You know, saying they need to make uh, uh, rubber anymore. Yeah. He didn't need to plant plantation. He focused, his yes, he focused on what he could do. Basically. He was very excited. Now, that is what the government can do. 
ensure that he encourages people to do what they have comparative advantage to do and then bring them together and then what the federal government can do providing infrastructure power is very important ensuring that there is strong value chain in oil and gas unfortunately we don't have time to discuss that now mm -hmm. we'll, because we'll if you that. have strong value chain in oil and gas oh many of our problems are gone because many of the things we import now and this subsidy thing we are talking about mm -hmm. will no longer exist True. many of the things that we are not refining we will refine here True. and when we do that the forex that we used to use to import the things we don't need it to stays it stays here and in addition to that there will be liquidity True. they don't know what to do they will not be forced to give it to the real sector mm. to produce and that will be china's ah. loss my brother you, see, you know it's a wonderful thing and i know that given what i've seen with the apc so far i believe strongly that somehow if they if they put their act together this country will be transformed truly transformed so you've talked about physical infrastructure what about the legal infrastructure is there a role that lawmakers can play in this value chain concept thing, I mean, in terms of growing the culture of value chain in our society, in our milieu. One thing they can do, like I mentioned earlier, that the the Nollywood uh, sector, for example, go to South Africa to do most things because they don't feel safe here. Mm. They believe that the things we make here, they can pass laws that punishes pirates, pe people who are pirates. Pirating is a bad problem yes. in this country. So the lawmakers can make laws. It's not that we don't have laws now, but ensure that these laws are enforced. We need good, strong institutions to ensure that the laws we have in place actually work and that when people misbehave, they are punished wherever they may be. That's why I have strong confidence that this president will do that, starting from himself. You know, if you, if you lead by example, if you are a lawmaker, you misbehave, you are punished, others will sit and, and do the correct thing. So lawmakers have their, play, their, their role. They cannot sit there and make laws and some are sleeping, some don't attend meetings and so on. That is no longer going to be possible, I believe. Then the judiciary will sit up and ensure that when people bring cases to court that somebody has pirated my work, it will be dispensed of quickly and the person punished. If all the sectors do what they are supposed to do, this country is bigger than what we think. And I believe that uh, the, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Before we go, I'd like you to touch on relating this concept of value chain to the service industry. Uh, we've been talking about manufacturing, we've been talking about retailing and merchandising. Uh, I'd like you to also extrapolate and relate it to the service industry because Nigeria is at the moment uh, much more service oriented than manufacturing. Actually, you industry. yourself had done that even before I did. You know, you, know, you mentioned the issue of somebody with a, a, a store who was doing that's part of the service industry the nollywood is part of the service industry the restaurant is part of the service industry there are things we take for granted now that we are if we are going to work by the value chain concept we will no longer take for granted i use a restaurant as an example personally i don't go out to eat much not because i don't enjoy it i love eating out but the worst thing that can happen to a customer is to enter your restaurant the menu is good, the bill is high, and rats are running under the table. Mm. Oh, Cleanliness. You the odor of rats that yes, last yes. night. Yes, and a spray of bacon and things like that. We have to have good finishing. We have to pay attention to details in our service. And we have to remember that we are not only serving the Nigerian audience, we are serving the international audience now. Mm. Because most of our things we sell, they buy internationally. Mm. In fact, people come to buy Nollywood products here. Yeah. So we cannot fact, behave. People export. Yeah, Nollywood they export. Products. Yes. So please, those things we are used to, like misbehaving and cleanliness, is not important. We have to, we we have we have to think outside the box and in the traditional way we used to do things. Mm. There must be cleanliness in the hotel business, hotel industry. Mm -hmm. Ah, we have to learn how to keep our hotels clean with no cockroaches, no ants, and things like that. The beshes are clean, the towels are clean, the service person at the desk is professional. Yes. All of these things can be done. If you go to some other African countries, which I won't mention, they started the way we are talking now and they've gone quite far. Wow. Their service industry uses the value chain 
and they don't leave from leave. the car park yes. down to yes. the very last. Yes, it takes a lot more to frown than to smile. Oh dear, <laughs> that's deep. But that's true. That's it, takes, it doesn't take anything of you. Oh, good afternoon, good morning. How are you? What country are you from? Your accent. Oh, are you from Kenya? I know you are not in Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria. Believe me. You may just be the only one that person has heard in Nigeria say, you know, be nice. So our value chain must transcend just the physical product. Mm. It must also include the non-physical things that are people who cannot touch but they can experience. We should begin to show the real Nigerian in us. Because we are very good people really. And we are hospitable people. Somehow along the line because of poverty and importation of strange things, we are losing our way, but we, I'm just hoping, because when I was young, this country was not like this at all. No, so I'm hoping that we'll get back to ourselves and be the kind, clean people we are and do business properly. Mm. Um, so we, we're, we're gradually winding down now and uh, we need to know your final thoughts um, to startups, small business owners, and of course those who run conglomerate business out there. And of course the government who will facilitate all of these uh, stakeholder concepts. Your final thoughts and your final message. So uh, my final that. message is that for, for many of us, including those in government, maybe our time is limited. But for the young people who are really coming out to give their best, they need support from us, support from government, we should give that support. Whatever we know that will push them forward beyond the boundary we have set, we should give it that support. And I already seen from the discussion we had before that young people are breaking out of the box. Mm -hmm. We should let them break out. They will make mistakes, mm -hmm. which is okay. It's part of it. When you make mistakes, it helps you, you to even grow. Yes. So we need that support. That we cannot hide our heads in the sand and say, oh, uh, we, we know it all. They are too young, which is something that this system should stop. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I believe that whatever uh, skills they require, uh, capacity they require to excel and build value chains, that result in national development and balanced development in this country. We should do it. And those of you who have talent to give to those in the north, in the northern part of this country, we should begin to do it because that's part of the link. It's part of the chain. And so those people in the media in the north, they also need those of you here to assist. You know, so uh, it's, a it's a privilege to talk about this because I'm hoping that uh, our discussion may have affected one or two people and that they themselves will also carry the message to the next level. Uh, so thank you for inviting me. Professor Garber, yes. thank you very much for honoring our invitation to be on the program. Thank you, thank you very much. It's been quite stimulating thank speaking you. with you thank and uh, educating. Thank you. We wish you the best in your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you.